when you're in a jammed subway car and you're right up against somebody else. Wash my hands the second I get out. That's it. Take a shower when I get home and uh, wash my clothes. They say like, you know, um, it's more if you already have the disease, but at the same time, it's, are my odds better if I have this on, you know? Like if someone sneezes next to me, I'm covered. distancing is keeping enough distance between you and another person. And the idea behind that is the only way for a virus, this particular virus, to get into the body, it's, it's not happening just through the air. You have to touch something and get it into your face and your body. So if it gets on your arm, that's not going to do anything to you. At least that's what we're told. And of course, this is all evolving. What can happen is if someone sneezes and it gets on to you, that can create a problem if they're infected. And at this point, we really don't know who's infected and who's not because people can be asymptomatic, not have any of the symptoms and yet be carrying the virus. And someone who is vulnerable could get very sick. So with that distance, you're just optimizing your ability to stay healthy. such an interesting question because there are two ways to look at it. So one of the things that can happen with this kind of panic about a virus is xenophobia, feeding into rumors and having ideas that certain groups are more at risk than others, whether that's true or not. So you layer on the term social distancing and certain people can really feel victimized by that or slighted. But as a therapist, it's so interesting, we really rely on words and we're not supposed to touch any patient that comes into our office. And what we say is, put all of your feelings into words. So I see a lot of people explaining why they're not shaking hands or why they're not hugging. I mean, I'm a hugger, you know, I hug people. <laughs> I feel like I have to hold myself back. But it's putting into words, hey, you know, I'm not hugging, I'm not shaking hands because of what's going on, but I'm sending you love anyway. So there are ways to certainly minimize the emotional distance while keeping yourself safe and protected. The best way to combat against out of control fear is the facts. We need to get the facts and we need to get them from sources that are legitimate. Uh, the other thing is to take control where you can take control. You know, ask yourself, what can I do under the circumstances? And engage in activities that are optimistic but give you a sense of control. And having a sense that you can be okay, that there are possibilities out there for you. And just keeping things in perspective. Uh, the other thing that we can do is self-care. That if we are getting sleep and exercise and eating right and being around supportive people and keeping our mind healthy, our body will be healthy and more resilient as well. Mm -hmm.